In this video, I'm going to take the CRV from looking like this to something a bit more like this with a few of these added in and then sometimes in this position. Pretty much in the reverse order of that. So let's get to it. Catastrophically blown. Look, do you want it or not? Very cool. Right. So I've been agonizing over this for a little while, whether I was going to build a bed or simply buy one. I expanded my search radius on eBay a little bit and found a nice futon bed. So that's what I'm going to go and pick up now. It's about 70 miles away. It's going to take about an hour and a half to get there. But it's a lot cheaper than buying one from Argos or Dunelm or something like that. That's the plan. Hopefully it's all good and there's nothing wrong with it. What on earth? So there's two police officers here. Oh no, there's several police officers. Good God, what on earth happened? I think everyone's safe. Nobody, nobody looked hurt, there was no ambulance. Yeah, wow, that's not good. Oh, and I feel sorry for all of these people stuck in this traffic now. He didn't look too happy, did he? Oh wow, look, they're making, uh, trying to find ways to turn around and go back the wrong way down the one one way lane. English flag, love to see it. Birmingham, Coventry, Leicester. Right, I've now got to find, I don't actually know what the place is called. It's just an eBay seller. Our house furnishings. Hmm. I reckon that was probably it. What a pain, there's like nowhere to park. It's All right, we'll figure it out. Hi, oh, I mate. Mean, I think I'm just parked in a little car park around the corner. Um, I was driving. Oh, yeah, I was. I was driving past. Is it our house and furnishings? Yes, mate. All oh, right. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. I can't. I can't. I, mean, I can't find anywhere to park on this. There. Sorry. It's a. It's a little bit busy down here. Cars yeah. Vehicles are going all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it is, is it carryable to this to this little car park? Yes. Should be, yeah. shouldn't it? Yeah. All yeah, right. Definitely. Well, what I'll do is um, I'll park up, pay, and then I'll um, I'll have a walk down. I should be there in two, three minutes, something like that. No problem, mate. No problem. Pal. All right, mate. See you in a sec. Bye. Thank you. I spotted it on the way past, but there was just absolutely nowhere to park on that street. As he said on the phone, you know, it's quite busy. So uh, might just be a case of having to haul it. So I've just picked up the bed. Really nice guy, actually. I ended up chatting to him for about half an hour. But yeah, the bed's in the back. I think it might be a little bit too long. I think it's probably gonna be sort of five or 10 centimeters too long, which I knew when I bought it. So there may be a little bit of work we have to do with um, with the jigsaw. Just let me just navigate this roundabout. Roundabouts in Europe. I think that will be interesting. City driving as well. City driving, I think, will be really interesting. I consider myself quite a confident, quite a good confident driver for the most part. The driving on the opposite side of the road in the biggest car I've ever owned all the way through Europe could, I think, pose some interesting challenges. At the end of the day, if you don't crash, what harm have you really done? Hopefully nobody from the DVLA hears that. Let's make some sound. It's not slow. This test says you're a liar, love. <laughs> All right, I'm back. So let's see what we can do with this bed, see how long it is, see if we need to take the jigsaw to parts of it. I suspect possibly we do. Future problem. That's it with just two pieces in.
that's the bed in obviously a little bit too long we knew that so we're going to have to do something with that which we will okay i've kind of got it in sofa mode at the moment not really properly the back's still there but i'm glad i've got plenty of headroom back at it and what we need to do today is work out just how much shorter we need this to be i need to lose about two rungs which is a very loose measurement i don't want to lose it from the back because the back will end up raised on these little stilts and if i raise it on the stilts you know all the way back here it's just going to be a really steep angle so i'm thinking to lose one on the middle one on the back at the top here so taking basically this top part off re-drilling a hole for the wing nut although it's actually just a normal bolt and nut and then yeah it should should be the same that way i get to preserve this piece at the bottom and preserving that piece at the bottom means it'll still rest on here so i think that's got to be the plan getting rid of this so let's just crack on i've broken the bed back down into three parts i've measured off where i want to cut so i just need to retrieve my workbench aka picnic table definitely shorter okay so also off camera I've just cut now the uh, basically one panel's worth off this back part so all I've really got to do is line this up which I'll show you and then drill some nice holes put the bolts back in and that should fit very neatly. So I've drilled the two holes through, uh, put the bolts back in. I didn't really foresee this, but this actually won't fold in and out now because of this bit and this bit. So you'll see. So we definitely, definitely need to get the jigsaw on the go uh, and round both of these pieces off again. All right, so the most logical way I can think to do this is to use the off cut, line it up, use pen to draw around it and then jigsaw to that shape. And that way I know it should, unless I'm really missing something, then it should uh, open and close as a normal bed. Okay, so that's the markings drawn on there. I've actually taken even a little bit more off just to give me the best chance of this slotting together neatly. because I didn't drill that screw right through the center, it's fine in the seating position, but when you're in the bed position, this plank is now raised up that way. So that's just a case of drilling another hole. So now that I've moved the hole, it's just catching it. Just won't close on this little bit, um, but it's so tiny that I just need to take some sandpaper to that. Okay, cool. All right, next thing is to get this back in the truck, see if this fits. Fits like a glove, great. That's fantastic. Now you've got a chair. The next thing I'm going to do probably is use some of this timber to create some like runners almost, but I just need to be sure and think about how I'm going to do it. But 
create some runners so that this thing doesn't slip and slide around the back. There's also the question of these pieces, which are designed to sit under here and create a raised surface. That's quite good when it's a seat. But the problem I see is raised like that for the bed position might actually just be quite annoying to sleep. Let's put one under and see what happens. So I guess these little pieces are meant to sit in here, but then now it's resting, you know, it's all at an angle and it's, it's not as nice, probably comfier for sitting, but less comfy for sleeping. I suppose if your head's up here, maybe it's not too bad. Okay, there we go. That's the, uh, that's the bed set up. Because we've shortened the length of the base, the bed itself, I can't really shorten the length of the mattress. So it's a little bit squished, but I, I don't think it's really a problem. I can just double it up where my head will go um, to sleep, whether that's uh, that side or this side, I don't really know yet. But it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty comfy as well. I'm, uh, I'm quite content with that. Okay, first test of the bed. Super, super comfy. And I can see out the sunroof. That's awesome. I'm quite impressed that I've managed to put this together. Even though really it's just some bits of wood as a platform and uh, on a chopped up futon mattress, but it's cool. I'll show you now what I see. So this is kind of the perspective that, that I get, obviously here the roof is lower to accommodate for the sunroof so here i can't sit up right but over here there's plenty of space this is what it's all about really look at that man that's cool and then alternatively there you go this is comfy as well i haven't really seen many other sort of camper designs where you can do something like this. Usually people have boxes all the way up to here and then their bed on top and you could never sit in one of their campers. I have seen some other designs where they'll leave one rear seat in so you can sit but this is just so much cooler. Let's get out of here if I'm not locked in. Do I have the keys? Ooh, do I have the keys? I do have the keys. And this is my escape hatch. Okay, so these two pieces, which should tuck into here to raise the seating position. I said I wasn't gonna put them in because they will also raise um, the sleeping position. But I've just had what might be a stroke of genius. These rounded pieces, which I cut off one of these other platforms, because they're rounded, they should be able to go in and then fold flat. So I can just fold them flat when it's in the sleeping position and the bed will be perfectly flat. And then when I want to turn it into a chair, just lift them out. And then you end up with a slightly raised chair. I've just tried it out and it works really well. So I've just got to bolt them through. Okay, hopefully now you can see where I've put that bolt through. Because this is a rounded edge, it's not a perfect fit, but it will. fold totally flat and then when you want it to be in chair mode it will go up. That's how they should have designed these pieces in the first place honestly because then you then it's retractable right whereas with these pieces it never would have been retractable it was either always raised or not. Since I started doing all of this I have not once charged this power bank and it still has 52 percent so I think that's probably a good sign. I think it's probably time for a haircut, isn't it? Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for the comments, likes, and even a couple of subscriptions that came from that first video. I'm editing the second video, which you're watching now. And it really just made my day to see some of those comments and be able to interact with a few people. So if you've got any questions, queries, comments you want to make, I will of course respond to them. Um, and it really sort of makes my day a little bit. So yeah, please go ahead, do all of those things. It, just makes me happy, I suppose. Well, that's it. 
we have arrived at B&Q yet again. Off to buy some screws and hinges. And that is what I'm after, but I can't see it anywhere. And the reason I couldn't find them is because I was looking the wrong way. 666, the devil's hinges. I think not. So a couple of these planks, a lot less space in the car now. Hinges and then like a cupboard catch, which should be really good so I can close the cupboard up when I drive off. So the plan then is to leave the bed in place and effectively mark out on the wood where and how we're gonna build this cabinetry. The battery pack is gonna live here. So that space is kind of taken, although there's a little bit of room above it. And then I've got a mini fridge, which I bought from Amazon for a hundred pounds. And I've been, well, it's been on for the last two days. I've effectively just been seeing how much power it takes from the battery pack. And it's actually really efficient. That's gonna live there, but I think it's gonna have to live raised because it opens from the top and that should give a little bit of space underneath. Space is definitely gonna be a bit of a premium in this build because unlike most car campers that you see, they'll build a platform up to here, maybe even higher, and then they'll build their bed on top of that platform. And that allows them to use all of that space underneath for storage. Now I haven't done that because I wanted this sort of sofa bed option. I'm perfectly okay with that. But what that actually means now is I need to find more creative ways to build in storage. Obviously the area under here is storage, but quite difficult to access at the moment. So I've got a lot to think about when I'm building this. I've just put the battery power bank in and I've put the fridge in. You can kind of get an idea of just how limited the space here really is going to be. I've kind of got this uh, space here and then maybe I can do something a little bit creative underneath the fridge, raising that level slightly so I can get a bit more storage space there. But yeah, very, very tricky. Okay, so this is an Alpicool nine litre fridge. It just plugs in with a 12 volt socket into the power bank. Now I had it running for the last uh, whew, 48 hours pretty much, and it took 30% of the power from the power pack. So I guess it's about 15% per day, but you have to keep in mind, if the car gets hot, then the fridge is gonna have to work harder to keep everything cool. So inside you can kind of see the space that you've got available. It's not that much. But what it'll allow me to do is just put some cheese, some meat, uh, some milk, anything else I need to keep refrigerated. And because it's so small, it can last for quite a long time. So the easiest way I can see to do this is I've kind of got it where I want it now. And I'll use some of these timbers, put them around the edges and build a box around this. I quite like to be able to cover this as well because I don't want it to be obvious to anyone who's peering into the vehicle that there's something in the back, which I guess is moderately valuable. Um, so use some of those timbers, build an outline, raise it and build a box around it. You just need to be very careful because it's a compressor fridge not to cover up these spaces. So this, maybe this will actually get flipped that way. Okay, so I flipped it around and I'll just plug it in so you can see it in action. And there it is, so it's currently at four degrees and it is, you probably can't tell, but it is ice cold. This will actually go all the way down to, I think, minus 20 degrees, which means you can use it as a freezer. So what I need to do now is just use a tape measure, measure around the outside of here and on the far end, so I can build a kind of box around the refrigerator. 13 inches, 15 inches. So next step is just simply to drill those in. Okay, now these two screws actually screw into the platform that we put on the underside. So I'll never need to replace these two screws, that's fantastic. However, these ones I will need to replace with some shorter screws because underneath the screws are a little bit too long and it pokes out. That is an accident waiting to happen. So yeah, these two went into there, very happy with that. This one, somewhat less happy about. Of course, now that I've actually done the screwing and it's a little bit too late, it occurs to me that I could have just taken a shorter screw and screwed in from the bottom up. It actually would have been a little bit less ugly as well. Okay, so that's lined up there. Just need to mark this off. Okay, a little bit short, but that's okay. Uh, so I just had some synapses firing and I had an idea. 
instead of screwing straight down and then having yet another screw poking through on the underside, I can just screw in from this side and from this side into a piece of wood that I'll put here. And that'll be fine because actually right here, you see where this screw is, there's a piece of thick wood underneath. So I can screw that new block here and then screw that into the side and that into there. And then I don't have any more screw problems. Hopefully that made sense, maybe not. Okay, so I've just cut this piece of wood to go in there. And I just need to make sure, because there's a thicker piece of wood underneath, that when I screw, I'm lining up with this screw. But obviously I don't want to screw into that screw, if that makes sense. Hopefully it makes sense. And then this piece can be attached by screwing through there and there. Disregard everything I've just said, I've had a better idea, which is stop being lazy, take the bed out, take the fridge out, and then I've got these markings on here. I'll line the wood up, screw it in from the bottom. It's just, I was just being lazy and I'm sick of being lazy. It's not the right way to do it. We will fix these screws at the same time. Okay, so I'm ready to screw through from the other side. I just need to be able to hold this in place, kind of like that. Would it be easier? Upside down. See, what we're doing here is just thinking about things before we do them, which is not something I'm usually very good at. So that's that first one done. Much cleaner without screws coming through. So redoing these, I think does make a lot of sense. But yeah, just got to drill through these pilot holes again from the other side and we're good to go. I can drill these screws in just so they protrude a little bit. And then I know exactly where in the wood I need to drill a pilot hole. Okay, so these screws now are just gently protruding. So if I line this wood up. Oh, hello kitty cat. How cute is that cat? You go wherever you want. Really curious, look. Absolutely adorable. You going for a drive? You're beautiful, aren't you? Yeah. Hello. Oh, you are so cute. Oh. Oh, careful. Can I stroke you? Oh. Oh, yes. You're so, so cute. See ya. Right, you're always welcome here. That has made me rather happy. That is a very, very cute cat. Anyway, as I was saying, these little screws have now just gently protruded through. So what I can do is take this piece of wood, line it up, and then all I've got to do is just punch down a little bit. And I should have two pilot holes. This is obviously the bottom of the board. I've just screwed through here, and that is somewhere, somewhere in here. And that means now that I can take this screw out from the top, and that will be the last screw hazard that's sticking out the bottom. So that's good. I've kind of just fixed the mistake that I made. Okay, that's that screw out now. Right. Did 
you might remember that one of the jobs that I need to do is drilling out a kind of access to this space under here. To do that, I'm going to cut into here, take you know a nice square shape out, but then I'm gonna put that piece of wood back in and it'll be supported, if I get the cut right, by these pieces. Very randomly, this was at 50% not very long ago, and it now says 0%. So I don't know if this Bluetti works <laughs> anymore. I've, quite, I've kind of lost a lot of confidence. Yeah, that's not, that's not cool. Well, that's going to put an end to the, uh, the day's activities. I just plugged it in and it's charging. It seems to really believe it's on 1%, but it was on 50% out here maybe half an hour ago. I've got no idea what could possibly have drained the battery like that. I checked on the app. There's nothing in the, uh, it has like a battery management system. There's nothing in there that seems to be obviously broken. So it's really tricky for me to know what's just happened, but it's worrying me quite a lot that, about that Bluetti. I'll probably contact Bluetti. Well, I'll go online and I'll see if there's something that could have happened that's ordinary. I doubt it. And then I'll speak to Bluetti. I need that power supply ultimately for the journey. Um, and if I can't rely on that power bank, then yeah. Welcome back. I reached out to Bluetti overnight uh, and they replied to me today actually. And they gave me some advice about fully discharging, recharging, updating the battery management system software. The power pack itself has returned to full charge to 100%, so I think the only thing I can do is take their advice, which I'll do tonight, fully discharge it, recharge it, update the software. But for today, I'm just gonna crack on and, and see what we can get done. Okay, so the last thing I was gonna do last night was cut out this cubby hole here. And the reason being is that I'll then be able to open this up and I'll be able to access the storage underneath. I was going to do that last night, but of course the, the power bank had its little mishap. So I think that's where we'll pick up today. Okay, let's do that. Now it's absolutely boiling. This weather reminds me of the Falkland Islands a little bit. They say in the Falkland Islands, you can get all four seasons of weather in the space of an hour. And having spent five months there, I can tell you that's true. Do you know what was really cool that I noticed? Obviously I'm wearing a little microphone, but when I was editing the first video, you could hear all the bird song. Um, I didn't think that would come through very well on the microphone, but there's certain shots where you can hear it. And I don't know if you can hear it now, but it's beautiful. It's lovely. That's pretty good. I'm gonna take this, put it back in, see if it works. If it does, build a little handle on top. Bob's your uncle, we'll leave it at that. This is the moment of truth. That can be perfected later. So the next thing I wanna do is build up the sort of cabinetry piece here. Now this fridge needs to be able to open and it opens from the top. So this has to be the topmost item. I can't build anything on top of here, otherwise I wouldn't be able to get into the fridge. So what I'm thinking about doing is applying this plank and then putting a sheet of ply through the bottom so this has got something to sit on. And then this still is at the top. That's the second piece in. So this just needs to be screwed into there. But I also need to do another one for here. And if you can see it, that one. That looks pretty good. You know, this is that off cut of timber, so maybe that will just sit in there and stop anything falling back. What I'm doing here is I want to screw this in from the bottom. These top pieces now are ready to be drilled in. What I've done is I've just jigsawed a hole through here and that's so that the fridge cable can come from the battery through here and into the fridge. Just stops that cable dangling around everywhere.
just put these little screws in in this bracket and it is rock solid. All I really need to do is take this point and this point, mark them on, draw a line between them and cut uh, and I should get a nice perfect shape for the fridge to sit on. The next thing I'm going to do is put in another one of these brackets here because it's only got one screw so this should just keep it a little bit firmer. Wooden piece cut to shape, it's a little bit off here. I also have cut an extra cubby hole in here, just another way to access the storage so from outside I can get in there, from inside I can get in. Okay, I didn't film this just because I'm racing against time a little bit, but I've cut these pieces of wood and all I need to do now is take this sheet off, screw these in from underneath, screw this back on. If you're wondering, you don't have to wait for too long. The fridge is in and I can confirm it still looks a bit naff, but there's nothing under here, right? It is rock solid. You can now easily access the fridge and there's a bit of storage space underneath. So that was the goal and that's what we've achieved. Fridge is on, which is being charged by the Bluetti. Come back to that in the morning. Well, that's it done for the day. The idea of having that kind of floating or, you know, a pier floating space, I thought was quite cool. I'm not quite sure that the execution matched the, uh, the intention, but it'll do. It's a little bit of extra storage space. It took a lot longer than I thought it would, but it's really sturdy. It's really rigid. And so tomorrow I just need to build a similar thing for the power bank. It's almost there. So you can hear it, maybe. That's the sound it makes when the compressor's on, but actually the compressor isn't on most of the time. It'll cool it down to, I've got it set to five degrees. It'll cool it down to maybe two or three degrees. And then the compressor will simply turn off until the temperature gets up to five or six degrees and then it'll turn back on. So most of the time it's actually not on. Ice cold. I think I've decided that the Blue Eti is gonna live here. I quite like that it's tucked away in the corner because I don't want anyone to be able to peer through, see it and see that as an opportunity to break into the car and take something. So all I think I need to do really is build a timber bracket in there so that this can't come forwards or move and then build some kind of cabinetry storage here. So yeah, fairly straightforward. I just measure that off, put that in and then start building up and build some cabinetry and maybe a couple of shelves with some ply. Cool. Plan now, this is a little bit dirty because I've just stood on it but is to put in two sheets of wood that come up and then have a sheet of ply going over and then down and there we have it then plywood sheet over the bloody could still come out um, you just have to put the bed into the sofa position and then slide it out this piece of wood to the platform uh, and that's another place that the plywood top, if you like, will drill into. From here to here, it's about 11 and a half inches and then across it's about 34. So I've just got to cut that square shape now and then screw it in and then bracket it in and see how stable it is. Okay, so I've cut this piece of wood out to the right length. I didn't film the jigsawing because I figured everyone's seen enough of me jigsawing already. Just kidding. But yeah, the next thing is really just for me to put in a couple of self-tapping screws through each block. I am a moron. I can't plug a 12 volt socket charger 
into the back because the battery bank itself is in the way when it's like this. It'd be a lot easier if I hadn't already put this thing in because this obviously is holding the battery firmly in place. Now this is on top as well. It's just started raining. That coupled with my, uh, my mistakes here, I'm going to interpret that as a sign to call it for the day. Not a major problem. I'm really not that worried about it. I'll find a way to make it work. Just frustrating because I was quite happy with the progress that I was making. Okay, I have overnight once again had a good idea. And that good idea is why don't I raise this platform here in the same way that I raised the fridge platform to come just underneath this sort of shelf area and then put storage underneath exactly as I did over there. It's a shame because it means a lot of this work that I've done will end up being wasted. But if this is going to be the best thing, then it's definitely worth doing. I've taken basically everything I did yesterday out. This is never coming out. These screws, they simply will not unscrew with a screwdriver, a ratchet, the drill. And we're going to build a raised platform just like that one over there here for the battery with some storage underneath. Screwed this in. These aren't screwed in, but I'm just creating a kind of port for this to come through around and hook into the Bluetti. And it comes underneath through and into the charging point. That's these two pieces in. I used brackets all around on here and this is actually really secure. This one's a little bit less so, it's a bit shaky. So maybe I'll put a bracket in here. The next thing I need to do really is just build one more piece, which is kind of the equivalent to, to that piece on the fridge which will help support a lot of the weight. I did actually record me going through all of this, um, but unfortunately there was some kind of problem with the microphone and it didn't pick up any of the sound. I mean, you've probably seen enough of me drilling and screwing things. All I need to do now is double this sheet here uh, and then put the ply on top. I'm not sure uh, how much of the footage is going to be useful because again, my microphone keeps playing up and I don't realize until I check. Um, but what I've done is I've put this square in here and then I've built this ply piece for the top, which I'll line up as best as I can. And then we're gonna sit the battery this way. So it's diagonal. I couldn't decide if I wanted it uh, horizontal or, uh, or lateral or vertical, whatever. So we're gonna have it going diagonal, which actually I've tried and it looks really cool. And it shouldn't really, uh, it shouldn't really take anything away from the stability. We'll screw this back in now. I'll put the battery on and you can see how it looks. So what do you think? I think it looks really good. It's a more ergonomic angle for using if you're in this side of the, the bed. Put a bracket there, something at the front. Can't go anywhere at the back. We we'll just need to make sure whatever I do put at the front to keep this in place is, you know, really strong. We've got some carpet that's just been delivered and some adhesive. So at that point, we can start using this carpet uh, and the spray adhesive to cover up some of the awful woodworking and terrible joinery. You will never, ever guess where I'm driving to. Okay, unfortunately there are no prizes if you correctly guessed B&Q. So what I bought was a staple gun and um, an N95 mask so that I can wear that when I'm applying the spray adhesive. And what I'm going to do today is apply some of that felt carpet over the platforms and ideally over the fitments, over the fridge stand uh, and the battery stand as well. I don't really need to do this to be totally honest because everything is functional as it is. I was looking at the, the wood the other day, I thought mm, that doesn't look great. I know this is slightly off topic, but just on the drive back, I've seen maybe six golden retrievers and a flat coated retriever. Flat coated retrievers are quite rare. But that's made me quite happy. <laughs> They're just beautiful dogs. They're just, I love them. I really, really do. Yeah, all dogs are great, really, but got a soft spot in my heart for retrievers. Okay, anyway, plan for today, very big change. Shouldn't be too much jigsawing or drilling. I say that now. I'm gonna take the platforms out. I suppose there will be drilling because I'm gonna take the fridge platform out and then I'm gonna apply this carpet that's in here over the top. I'm gonna to try and carpet 
these pieces as well, so it all ends up looking a little bit neater. This is something I should have bought a long time ago because actually having something like this would have helped me create so many better straight edges. Lesson learned, eh? Okay, so that's this platform piece out. And I suppose what's good about that is it shows just how easy and quick it is to, you know, take this platform apart. That's a bit wonky. Everything else is in there really rigid, but this one isn't. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe that happened. We'll try again. not be a litter bug. Right, let's unfold this, see how much carpet we've actually got. Okay, that's not too bad, that's quite a lot of length. For this, I ordered, it comes in two meter, it comes off a two meter roll, and I ordered three times two meters. So if you're wondering what will suffice for a car, I'd say probably two by three meters is pretty much, well, we'll see. If I end up having to buy more, then it obviously wasn't the right amount, but at least now you know. I would strongly recommend getting some sharp scissors. This is actually pretty painful to do. That was hard work. Stanley knife blades should make life a little bit easier. Nice and gentle. Should probably clean this with a solvent, but the old hand brush will have to do. A little disclaimer, I've never carpeted anything in my life. So if you're like a carpet fitter or something, Look away now, because this is probably going to be pretty painful for you to watch. Hey everybody, I'm here today to show you how to use a staple guide. Kind of wish I had some goggles for this. Holy sh**. It's like silly string. Well, it smells good. I will say that.
Okay, so I've kind of trimmed the outline edge. Now I just need to glue these parts down, turn it over and staple. Same process now, but on the underneath. Okay, so that's the underside done. Essentially just folding the carpet back over, gluing it down, stapling it, making sure everything's nice and taut. Unfortunately, the camera died, which meant that I didn't manage to record all of that. But we'll have a look on the other side now. Hopefully everything's looking good. And this is how the top side's looking. It's not perfect there, but remember that's where the small hatch, if you like, will go. I just added a little bit of carpet here. So the next thing I need to do is try and remember how this went together. I carpeted this bit off. It doesn't look very good. It looks like it looks like Johnny Age 5 had a go at it, to be honest. Um, but I'm not trying to win Van Life for the Year Award, so I'm not too worried. Okay, I think that was it. I'm not going to carpet these bits. Maybe I'll come to regret that in the future. Um, but I think, you know, it'll provide a bit of contrast. And also, I don't really have the time or the patience. I just want to get going. So this is the top piece where the fridge actually sits and uh, just, just off camera just now I've stapled some carpet in underneath and then we're going to come over, glue some of this area down, cut it around the edges and hopefully that will look quite neat in the van. The glue does seem to come through the carpet a little bit, I can feel it on my hands just ever so slightly. So if you have the opportunity to get some gloves before you do this, I would say that's probably a good idea. So I'll cut along here, following this edge, and then down here, so this will all be excess. And then this now should fold around unimpeded and hopefully look all right. Okay, so that's the top piece. All I need to do now is try to remember where the screws went um, and screw it back together, check that the fridge still fits even with the carpet on. I'm sure it will be fine, fairly sure. That's how we're looking. By no means is it perfect, but I think it probably looks better than it did before. Let's try putting the fridge in now. All right, yeah. Fits like a glove. So there you have it. Just need to put this back now. I might go around, do a few more staples. Today we're going to try and get this piece carpeted. The weather looks like it doesn't want that to happen. If it starts raining, I'm going to have to abandon projects halfway through. So we're going to have to go pretty quickly on this, I think. I've taken everything out, including obviously this piece of wood won't come out, but I've taken everything else out, ready for this to be carpeted.
Jason, to get around this block, if you have something similar to this, all I've done is uh, cut through the top and then once I've glued everything down, I can more precisely trim around the edges. Good old Stanley knife. Now, like I said, I'm just going to cut around the edges of here. A couple of staples around this area. Now I just need to cut around and fold it all over. Now I'm just going to flip it over and start gluing and stapling again. Well, hopefully you can see, I've just got a little bit of trim left over. So I just need to go around, fold, cut where I need to, staple, and we're good to go. Okay, and that is one slightly rushed underside. The weather's actually got a little bit better now, so maybe I didn't need to go as fast as I did. Now for the grand reveal. Look at that. It's pretty good, isn't it? I have got absolutely no complaints. The really difficult part now is going to be, obviously there's screw holes underneath for all of the pieces that we took out. I'm trying to work out where those screws are is gonna be a bit hit and miss. I'm probably just gonna have to stop poking around until I feel something go. I also took some pictures as I was disassembling the little cabinet there. So hopefully that can help us piece it back together. Yeah, once this has got a bit of a hoover on the go, this should uh, come up quite nicely. That, the perfection of this is starting to make the terribleness of that more irritating. Okay, so here's all the little pieces. Now it's just up to me to work out how to get it back in. Okay, I'm consulting this photo and I'm trying to go digging for where those screw holes were. Ooh. Carpeting done. This is back together. I wonder which parts would look best carpeted up. Okay, we're going to give it a go. We're going to take uh, this out, this off, this off, carpet them, put them back.
I think that looks all right. That concludes it for this video. I, I've effectively run out of storage space, but we're pretty much all the way there anyway. I don't think I'm leaving you on a crazy cliffhanger. There will be a follow-up video with some extra little bits that I'm going to do, adding some lights and things like that, but nothing too crazy beyond what's already in there. The next videos that you can realistically expect from me are me using this thing, testing it out here in the UK first, and then going on that 10,000 mile road trip through Europe itself, of which I will, of course, take you with me. So yeah, if you made it this far, that's absolutely amazing. I can't believe you're even still listening to me droning on, but please do, you know, throw a comment. I will, of course, respond to it. Like, subscribe if you're a legend. Yeah, that's it. Peace out.